Hello and welcome to another video from the only source of information that you need to not only survive the current apocalypse, but actually enjoy. And today's video is just going to be me telling y'all what's going on because I don't want anybody to worry about me. I'm not going to jail. I'm not going to die that I know of. But I may be kind of out of sorts for a while because my computer's not acting right and I'm doing some work on it. Uh, right now I'm thinking I'm going to get through this okay, but just in case, for just in case, I'm going to go ahead and upload this video warning everybody so that if I disappear that you, you'll know that I'm okay. <clears throat> but anyway, I do have multiple computers in the house. I'll still be able to respond to text messages and stuff. I just won't be able to upload videos. And currently I am fresh out of Bible videos. I have no more uploaded to YouTube. I have no more on my hard drive. They're all gone because uh, I got to the point where I was ready to start pr producing some really, really good videos. And I started to worry about uh, like what happens now. Right now, I've got videos up there. They're incredible videos. Uh, Written in Stone, All Seeing Eye, Angels and Men. Those are series. They're long, drawn-out series, just like Melchizedek is going to be. And occasionally, I still get messages about those. And when I go to respond to those messages, the, the easiest way for me to do that is to go to the videos and just respond there, which means that uh, every day I have to look at some old footage. And it's very disappointing to me to see me for me to see me talking about some of the most important information in the world in super grainy video with audio you can barely hear. And not only that, but a lot of times it's me sitting in my house talking and I don't like that. I like just sitting out here. And even the, the videos I post out here, I don't like when the grass is up to my stomach. So <clears throat> I've been, you notice I've been cutting the grass, and you know that I went back to my channel and I cleaned up all my videos. I put proper thumbnails on them, proper descriptions. I arranged them in proper playlists so that people would be able to find things. And, and at the same time, I incorporated uh, some other things. I started posting twice a week, regularly, at the same exact time, on the same exact day, wearing the same exact clothes, same glasses, same headband, same shirt. Well, I didn't want to do that. I mean, I wanted my playlist to be right, my videos to be right. I wanted my grass to look nice. Uh, I, I actually want to be able to post videos twice a week at the exact same time. That doesn't sound like a bad thing, but I didn't like wearing a double-knit shirt and a purple headband, uh, mostly because, you know, the, the reason I wear a T-shirt is because it's comfortable, and a double-knit shirt is not comfortable, you know, and there's so there's that conflict going on in my head is like this is not me nobody else knows it's not me but i know it's not me and the same thing with the headband you know this here this is a baby diaper you can still get them at walmart.com and uh, last time i was in walmart they had them on the shelf but these vapor diapers are cotton and they absorb the sweat keep it from dripping down you know my glasses are constantly wanting to fall off my head and then every now and then a drop of sweat will hit my glasses and the same thing with the shirt i don't like the look of being in front of a camera with sweat spots all over my shirt and cotton shows that. The double knit shirt, you never see sweat on that thing, but it's so miserably uncomfortable. I really don't like that. And what I really don't like about it is that I have to take care of those. You know, this I can just throw in the wash. The double knit shirt, I can't because my, my well is really shallow here. And so after three or four washings, things look really, really dingy because of the iron and stuff that's in my well, well water. So I bring those to my mom's house to wash, and I don't like doing that to her. But uh, I'm, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. Every time I promise something, I don't follow through. Uh, and in fact, you know, I would follow through with the costume if... Uh, if there were some kind of benefits to it. But, I, you know, I always, I'm not one of the people that's always looking for signs, but then again, I am. When I did this, as soon as I ch fixed everything on my channel, cleaned up my channel, put on the costume, posted twice a week, instantly, the everything on YouTube went up. My po popularity went up, the money went up, the number of views went up, the n amount of time watched went up, and so I was very pleased with that. But I guess as I should have figured out when it was all over with and I was completely finished cleaning my channel up and I was no longer in YouTube's face every day, YouTube stopped putting me in other people's face every day. And so my channel started plummeting. 
not a big deal because it still it had to plummet a ways just to get back to where it was before, which I was cool with. But in the last two months, my channel has plummeted in popularity enough that I'm about... I don't want to say that I'm getting half as many views or on a video or half as much money, but it's getting pretty close to that. And so I don't want my channel to just collapse underneath me. And so I have to imagine that either it was just time for the channel to stop being popular or it's something I did. And if it's something I did, I'll go back and fix that. I certainly don't think that putting proper thumbnails on my videos and putting them in proper playlists did anything. But maybe wearing the costume did. Maybe posting twice a week did. You know, it could be that when I only had one video going up every other week, that people would watch them over and over again, or more people would watch them because it's all that I had available. Now that I've got two videos a week, you know, I get 300 views and that's kind of it. Maybe at the end of the week I might have 500 views, you know, back 10 years ago or five years ago anyway. Uh, it, in the course of a week, I got a thousand views on every video. And I have changed since then. You know, I'm not really into the prepping stuff. I don't talk with a cowboy voice anymore. And uh, I make a lot more Bible videos. And the Bible videos I make do not agree with church doctrines. And most people are addicted to their church doctrines. So anyway, I have taken steps to make my channel better. It didn't work. And so now I have to figure out which steps I took did make my channel better and which didn't. One thing I know for sure is that I, was, I am not happy whenever I am responding to a question on one of my older videos. You know, I've been making these for a long time. When I first started making them, I was absolutely ecstatic over the quality. You know, I didn't care about how bad the audio looked or, or sounded or how bad the video looked because everybody's video in the early days of YouTube looked like that. But uh, as time went on, uh, I got picky. When I was watching somebody's video, if it was crappy work, I wouldn't watch it. You know, I wouldn't wait until I got to the end to decide if it was no good. I could tell as soon as I turned it on if it was grainy, if I couldn't, I had trouble understanding what they were saying, that was a bad video. And so uh, now, every now and then, I'll get a, re a response. Somebody will comment on one of my older videos, and I'll have to go reply to it. And while I'm replying it, my video's playing. And I'm very, very disappointed with the quality of some of my older videos. Now, a lot of those older videos, it doesn't matter because there's nothing really significantly important about them. But some of my early videos were incredible. You know, the Written in Stone series was groundbreaking. The All-Seeing all Eye, the uh, Angels and Men. I've made a lot of videos that are just absolutely over the top unlike anything that's been spoken in 2,000 years. And each of those videos is absolutely essential for anybody wanting to understand the Bible because people only got two choices or three. They can figure it out for themselves, which they may do, or they can go to, their, to a church and ask the pastor, and he's going to lie to them, or they can come to me. You know, this is the easy way, come to me. I want to make sure that the viewing experience of anybody coming to my channel to look at these groundbreaking videos is a good one. I don't want somebody to turn my video off just because they can recognize the poor quality of it. I want them to hang in there long enough to hear what I'm saying. And so, you know, on top of, uh, on top of the costume thing and the posting twice a week thing and changing all the titles and uh, tags for my videos, I've come out here and cut the grass and I've started to make uh, higher quality, higher definition videos, things that are really, really nice to look at and easy to hear. And as a part of that, I have kind of gone through and kind of gotten rid of most of the equipment that I use that I don't, I'm not happy with the results. And I've gotten some new equipment. Now, I guess I just told y'all that my money dropped. I need to say something about that. My YouTube dollars has dropped. When I say my YouTube dollars has dropped, that doesn't mean please donate money. There is a PayPal button. I'm not going to take it down. But currently, you need to know that I just bought two brand new cameras, brand new audio gear, and uh, a lawnmower and a, a battery powered chainsaw all in about two months. And my bank account is exactly where it was when it started. So I am not hurting for money. I'm very good with money, and the money I get from uh, Social Security is, is adequate for everything I'm doing here on this channel. It costs me maybe $75 a month to make YouTube videos. You know, it's the internet connection and 
whatever else I have to spend. And I'm getting $75 a month from YouTube. So it's not like, I'm not paying for any of this out of pocket, really. So anyway, now that that's over with, just know that I'm not begging for money. Don't, don't run to, to donate to me because of all the trouble I'm having. Anyways, right now I have everything I need and I'm about comfortable with everything I'm doing except the way the videos get uploaded because between me shooting the video on this camera and getting it to YouTube, I have to edit it. When I do a Bible video series, I need to put text in there and I need to have two camera angles. And the reason for that is, if you can hear the thunder, I don't know if you can or not, it looks like it's gonna start raining. But anyway, it's like if I'm sitting here talking and Hello, we're going to talk about the Bible today. Um, we'll, uh, let's, um, let's go look at the book of Mark. Well, I'm not comfortable with that. I'll come back out and shoot, but take my script and start over again. And what I'll do is I'll piece that together. Well, with one camera, what happens is you see this. Hello, and welcome to another video from Sustenance and Covering. And today we're going to talk about Mark. You can tell that something went wrong there. You can tell that I cut something out, and I don't like that. With multiple camera angles, it can flow very smoothly because your eye is not going to catch on to the fact that I cut something out if I switch camera angles when I do that. The problem is I'm using Windows Movie Maker now, which renders into some obsolete format that does not do well with YouTube to start with. And secondly, Windows Movie Maker doesn't allow you to use two cameras. You have to, it, com, you have to completely edit one video and get that rendered, then completely edit another video and get that rendered. Then you have to start hacking up little bits and pieces off of each one and splicing them. For me to edit a 20-minute video was taking about two days. I can actually do an hour and a half video. Uh, I have done those in two days as well, but it's usually like all day from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to sleep just working on editing. And editing time is time when I'm not writing scripts. Well, recently I got a seven day free trial of a more modern video editing software. <clears throat> I used it. I had one of my subscribers patiently talk me through it. And right before the trial ran out, I actually loaded it up with some video, some audio, put in some text, and I was done editing 20 minutes of video in about two hours. And I'm sure that that would improve as I got more used to the, to the program. And the problem is I went to order it, and this is not me begging for money again either because I already know I don't want this program, but I got to the point where I was emotionally able to justify spending $21 a month for the rest of my life on this video editing program. Uh, one of the things that bothered me is that when I went to purchase it was $20.99, you know, not $21, $20.99 to kind of psychologically push me over the edge to paying. Uh, and, but what really got me was when I got to PayPal and I went to press the button, I looked down and it said $24. So like, why in the world would a $20.99 program cost me $24 where they're charging tax? I've never heard of somebody charging tax on a program. I'm not saying they can't or don't, but it bothered me that they would be sneaky about that. There's no way that they could not know that before they sent me on to PayPal. And PayPal was having me to agree to pay every month for one year, to be in a one-year binding contract, which meant that no matter what I did, that was, even if I was to like pull all my money off of PayPal or something, if I could even do that, that it would be on like a credit score or something. I'd never be able to work with PayPal again without giving them that money. And uh, I just couldn't do it. I stopped myself right there. And it was another thing that was in the back of my mind the whole time that I knew was probably going to happen before I, you know, before I even realized I was going to be stuck giving, because if you're in a one-year contract at $24 a month, that's almost $300, right? So I'm going to pay $300 for this thing. I have experienced in the past, I've heard of other people experiencing the same thing. You get a free trial version of something. Everything works perfect. You finally get to the point where you're willing to pay for it. They give you the full version and it won't work. And the reason it won't work is because they know that most people's computers cannot handle the full program. So what they give you for a free trial is the full program, or maybe there's a hundred things in that program, 
10 of those things are really resource hungry. So the trial version will take those 10 things out of there. You know, they're trying to ensure that your experience with this program is going to be good so that you'll give up your money. And there's a, there's a couple of things that happen with that. Is it once you've tested it, you're basically telling them that you know that that's your that's your guarantee time. You know, you're not going to get a 330 days get your money back thing because you already had your time in advance. So now you get the full program, it doesn't work. They're not going to give you your money back. They're not going to stop the contract. I'm going to end up paying $300 for something I can't use and and there's a good indication that that is what would have happened because since then I have tried several other programs that are free where they give you the entire program right off the bat and my computer will not handle it. So right now I'm struggling to get a program that I can that will I can handle that doesn't cost me too much money that I know for a fact isn't going to cost me too much money. And uh, as part of that I'm redoing my my computer, trying to redo my computer. So there's a possibility that I will lose the ability to use the computer that I use for everything. You know, I've got a whole bunch of computers, but the rest of them are very, very weak. I can respond to text. I can watch some YouTube videos on it, but I cannot upload video. I cannot edit video. And uh, right now, I'm not even going to shoot video. It may seem like a good idea to just go out, because I've got Right now, I have no more Bible videos left, which means this weekend, you're going to get this. Next weekend, you may get a video about my lawnmower or something, because I have no way to edit video, and I refuse to edit crappy video. I want video that is multiple camera angles. I want video I can edit in two hours as opposed to two days. And... Uh, I'm not going to start editing video until I have all that in place. And so there's no reason to shoot video. You would think I could go out here, set up my teleprompter, set up a secondary camera angle, turn on my audio recorder, shoot all the video, put it in a folder, and work with it later. But what happens is, from the time I make the video till the time I go to put it in, you know, um, in the editor, I forget what things I was, you know, what I wanted to do with that. It doesn't seem like that would happen, but it does. So... Um, I'm pretty much shut down. The channel shut down so that I can work on the computer, work on getting some editing software that will work. And uh, because, it, you know, this is going to be a big deal. The Melchizedek script is going to be like written in stone. I don't want five years from now to be going back and responding to questions on the Melchizedek series and be disappointed with the audio and video or editing. Now, one thing that has happened that has changed things quite a bit, I do not know why, I can't understand it at all. I have not gotten a new ISP. I have not gotten a new modem. But one of my subscribers suggested that I upload using Google Chrome instead of Microsoft Edge. I have no idea how that can make a difference. But videos that were taking me 24 hours to upload, well, actually about 22 for a one-hour video, it would take me about 22 hours to upload. I uploaded, like even yesterday, I uploaded a 25-minute video or something, and it took me four hours, I think. That's incredible. You know, do the math, that's 12 hours. We've cut down 24 hours to 12 hours. That may not seem like a big deal. It's like, wow, 12 hours to upload a video. But I can do the majority of that while I'm sleeping. See, when I'm uploading a video using my computer... I can't Skype, I can't watch videos, I, I can do like answer emails and stuff, but, but pretty much we're shut down because we don't have a real TV. The only thing we have to entertain ourselves is our computers, and when I'm uploading video to YouTube, I can't use my computer for entertainment. But using Google Chrome and starting it in the evening before I go to bed makes things a whole lot easier because I can wake up in the morning, I can uh, answer emails and stuff for a couple of hours, and then the, the video will finish uploading, and I can, I can do anything I want with my computer. I can just can't do editing right now. But anyways, if I, uh, if I do lose my main computer for a couple of weeks, uh, I will still be able to contact people. And I, can still, I have enough videos uploaded that you can get a, two videos a week for a couple of months. It's just that I don't have any Bible videos uploaded. I don't have any Bible videos recorded. I've got plenty of scripts 
You know, I think I've got almost the entire Melchizedek script. Just the last, the, the, number five or six needs to be adjusted a little bit, and then the final one I need to write. It's uh, probably going to be an hour and a half video, and I haven't even started on it other than to have a file full of notes. But it's that close. And then there's uh, Nick videos, which uh, I was planning on doing. And then there's uh, another series about money. It's a three-part series, and I got two of those scripts written. So there's a lot of scripts I could be producing. Now, when I do get back to posting Bible videos, what I may do is put part one of this series, and then wait a week and put part one of the next series, instead of putting them all one after the other, which I don't want to do. But right now, that's like I'm playing catch up. I haven't done anything. I haven't done any writing or any real video production in six weeks because of this technical problem I'm having. And so until I resolve that, uh, things are going to get kind of quirky. But I'm not worried too much. You know, I said I was going to stick to the schedule because YouTube promised results. Well, I'm not getting results. So the only ones that are really going to suffer are the people that look forward to my videos. And... Uh, and I hate that, but at the same time, I'm kind of limited. I really just, uh, I cannot stop my life to use Windows Movie Maker to edit, you know, one video. One, one video can take me as long to edit as it takes me to write the script. So we'll get it all straightened out. And in the meantime, feel free to contact me. I'm not going to lose contact with the world. I'm just going to you know, I just can't make videos right now, but I'll get that straightened out. Anyways, love y'all, and if you don't want to survive, don't listen to me.